today on Fox, a loophole in the state scholarship program is allowing kids to attend a private school for free. And if you pay taxes in Florida, it's costing you big bucks. Chase Kane investigates. Nine months ago, we showed you the loophole in the McKay Scholarship Program. And since our report, that loophole has cost state taxpayers $24 million. And instead of tightening up that loophole, one state lawmaker wanted to make it even bigger. Let's go to the first question. At Conrad Academy, your tax dollars allow this one teacher to have a remarkably small class because this class all has special needs. It is a goal as an educator to see the light switch come on and a student understand. As superintendent at Conrad, Tawanda Mills knows money spent in this classroom and on these students with mental and physical impairments is money well spent, but not money which should be wasted. My grandfather used to say it takes nickels and dimes to make dollars and quarters. Take care of your nickels and dimes. You got to take care of all those little things because they become the big things a little bit later on. She's talking about the McKay Scholarship, a more than $150 million program originally intended only for special needs students like the ones in Miss Mora's class, but now it is much more. McKay can now pay for students with issues you might not even consider a disability, like hay fever. If you wanted to take it out to its absurdity, you could almost basically argue that someone suffering from a peanut allergy uh, would qualify for a McKay scholarship. Our investigation shows you how students can abuse these special needs scholarships, essentially a free ticket to private school in Florida without having anything more than seasonal allergies. And I think that's a loophole we need to close. I think that's wrong. Joe Saunders is one of two new state lawmakers deeply concerned about the McKay scholarship, working for some change in Tallahassee this year. The other, a former school teacher. Parents whose kids go to public schools, parents whose kids really are learning disabled, they need to be educated about what's happening. What's happening is McKay costing taxpayers millions more because hundreds more students are entering through the new loophole. In fact, that slice of the pie has more than tripled. When parents use the McKay scholarship who don't need it, whose students, you know, who, whose children may have a peanut allergy, it hurts everybody. Abuse in the system hurts everybody. It will hurt the kids who this scholarship is really intended for. Um, and it's going to cheat the kids who are in the public schools, and it cheats the taxpayer. Karen Caster Dental beat out one of the co-sponsors of the McKay expansion and aims to undo what he did. Probably two-thirds of what we do in the legislature is passing laws that uh, we believe are good things, and then we find out later that there's certain consequences to them, and then we patch them, or, you know, some call them glitch bills. Well, there are some who think that this was a just, just a glitch in the law, kind of an unintended um, outcome, but it is it truly was the intention of the bill to broaden the definition, to allow more kids to go to private schools using the McKay Scholarship who don't necessarily qualify as learning, dis uh, learning disabled. And if something isn't done, educators fear what may be next. If we get away from the original intent, those children who we originally sought to protect and to guard um, will be exposed, their, they will be, their opportunities will be limited. It'll border on neglecting them if we're not very careful. Since we began working on this report, that bill to further expand McKay, well, it was withdrawn. But there is still no momentum in Tallahassee to completely close this loophole, and that's because Saunders and Castor Dental say that they need bipartisan support. In the newsroom, Chase Kane, Fox 35 News. By the way, unless legislators close the loophole, there's no way to control the soaring cost of the program. That's because federal laws protect programs that are designed for people with disabilities.